um i welcome you so i welcome you all uh, to our very exciting session uh, today where we are going to discuss about migrating a compose app to material u and mariam is our speaker for today and um, so a little about her mariam is an android expert at proven solutions a women technical ambassador and a public speaker at gdg communities she works as an android developer to build applications for robots that run on android os she has experience with uh, building mobile applications as well she strongly believes that the best way to be an expert at something is to teaching others about it. so very nice thought mariam um yeah so let um you know over to you mariam you can um start sharing your screen here and also um attendees you can post your questions in the q and a and in the chat and we'll be taking questions at the end of the talk all right thank you so much thank you uh pujita for the introduction i would love to share my screen now yeah yeah you can um share your screen all right can you see my screen yes um i can see your screen perfect amazing all right so as uh pujita said i am mariam hadefi a, actually, I'm a, a newly Google developer expert for Android. I just uh, got uh, this um, uh, this like a uh, news last uh, week. So yeah, I thought of sharing it with all of you here. Uh, and I'm here today to talk about in, in this session uh, to talk about migrating your pure Compose application to support uh, Material U. So let's start. With that, let's take a look at today's session outlines. First, we will talk about what's new in Android 12 system UI. And then we will talk about material U that is included in Android 12. After that, we will talk about Jetpack Compose and Compose Material Design 3, which supports material U. Then we will migrate our Compose app which is um, an art gallery application that I built. It's a simple uh, application. And we will work on migrating that application to support Material U. Now, yeah. Finally, I'm going to answer your questions. So please, please write them down in the um, Q&A section or in the chat section so we can answer them at the end of this session. I will dedicate the time for all of your questions. All right, uh, let's start. A lot has been changed in Android 12 to make the user interface more dynamic, modern, and responsive. And I said more responsive, uh, as you can see, the smooth motion and animation between taps and swipes. Uh, you can see it clearly when scrolling. There is a new stretch over scroll, scroll in Android 12 which replaces the glow effect in other Android versions less than 12. This overscroll behavior is supported if you update your app uh, to target the SDK level uh, 31 or, or more. In classic views, you can see it in grid view, list view, and uh, circular view, and view uh, pager. And in Jetpack Compose, you can see it in lazy column, lazy row, and Lazy vertical grid. Another great UI enhancement in Android 12 is Material U, which is the focus of today's topic. Uh, so, what is Material U? It is a set of design system updates that enables more beautiful personalized UI expression. It enables color theming capabilities to easily personalize the device colors and themes. And it does that by generating a full range of colors um, or color palettes created based on the user uh, wallpaper using a color extraction algorithm. So of course, all of these statements are based on the last Google I.O. and also on the last Android Dev Summit. All right, uh, let's continue. You can see here, uh, this is a demo app from Material Design. And the same app changes with different colors based on the user choice. 
all of these system capabilities are implemented uh, in Android operating system and some of the default applications, but not other applications like our applications. So what we need to do is we need to implement those new features uh, in our applications and make the user uh, experience more consistent. So this concludes the system UI section. Let's move to Jetpack Compose section. And for those who do not know what Jetpack, what Jetpack Compose is, it is the new uh, Android UI toolkit created to help us developers build a better application faster. Compose is built on top of Kotlin language and it uses modern architecture and powerful Kotlin APIs. It is a declarative UI toolkit, which means that we completely describe what our UI should look like for a given state. And then the framework should take care of updating the UI when that state changes. We said it's a declarative UI toolkit and we summarized the declarative approach. <coughs> So let's talk about the UI toolkit, which, which we'll be uh, using a lot today. Uh, Jetpack Compose implements the material uh, design components and theming style. This is the material theme API in material two, not material three, because Material three is, is the library that supports a material view and we'll, we'll discuss in details um, later. So this is the material team API in material two, which gives your app a unique, a unique appearance by customizing color, uh, typography and shapes. And actually I wrote a medium story in detail about application themes in Jetpack Compose and how to customize uh, all of those, um, all the colors, typographies, shapes uh, to make your app unique. You can check them out. Uh, the, sent, the links are sent in the chat. Material theme is enhanced by Material 3. Uh, compose Material 3. All right. <clears throat> So um, Material Theme is enhanced by Material 3. Uh, Compose Material 3 is the new Compose library to support Material U. It is in alpha right now. And yeah. <clears throat> and it includes Material U features like dynamic colors that we talked about earlier. What are the main differences between yeah, so what are the main differences between Material Design 2 and Material Design 3? Yeah. Uh, can you see my screen? I... Yeah, we still yes, can. Yeah. Uh, user generated colors. All right. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you. So um, this is the main uh, difference is the user generated colors, which are also called dynamic colors. As we said earlier, <coughs> I'm sorry, just a second. You will have to excuse my voice today. <laughs> I'm a bit sick. So I'm just uh, trying to survive here. <clears throat> So no anyways, uh, all right, cool. So anyways, let's get back to this. So th this is the main um, difference between the uh, material two and material three is called the dynamic colors. Uh, based on the individual wallpaper, the color values for the operating system and some of its default app are changed dynamically through a dynamic color extraction algorithm based on that uh, wallpaper. 
like in the default wallpaper for pixel text, the color schemes are generated based on this wallpaper. As you can see here, we have the accent colors and then we have more neutral colors. The accent colors are like, you can see here the primary, primary key color, secondary key color, and the tertiary uh, key color. All of those are extracted based on this wallpaper. And as you can see here, different color schemes are generated for both light and dark theme. This is, this is the light <clears throat> and this is the dark theme. Okay, so the color primary variant is deprecated in material three. There is no um, color primary variant. There is uh, other colors like tertiary, on tertiary, and the containers, and other colors also. Uh, another main difference in material three uh, is that the typography styles are simplified now. Before, there were there were six headlines variations. <clears throat> There were six headline uh, variations, uh, two subtitle variations, body, two body variations, uh, button caption, and overline styles. Now in material three, as you can see here, there is a more regular and smaller number of variants uh, for each classification, uh, namely small, medium, and large. As you can see here, we have a display, three display, large, medium, small, headline, large, medium, small, title, and so on. And we have body and labels. There are also other major components update in material three that I'm not gonna mention today because we will be focusing on the color and typography in today's migration. If you want to know more about those updates, like there are um, there are top, up, bar, small, and medium, I think something like that. And there are other also, um, like other also um, changes on some of the APIs for the Jetpack and Post. So I would suggest that if you're interested, you can check this blog from Material Design. As you can see here, this is the application, our application that we will uh, going to migrate today. It's an art gallery application. It displays uh, famous paintings with their information like the painting artist, a description for each painting. All right, let's start with that. Let's start with migrating. You can follow along with today's practice by starting on without material you branch on GitHub. This is the GitHub repository. You will see all the code there. There are two branches, the, the main branch, which contains the migration to, to material you and the other branch is without material you. And you can follow the same steps to just produce the same thing. All right. <clears throat> To use Material U, we will need to prepare the setup from the Gretel section. So we need to add the Material 3 library implementation and our build Gretel file. We will add it in the dependency section. And in the same file here, as you can see here in the Android section, we need to change the compile SDK version and also the target SDK to target Android 12, which is 31. All right. Also in the manifest folder uh, or in the manifest file, we will need to, mo to make some modification. 
first we need to add the target API attribute here, as you can see here, tools target API 31. We need to target the <coughs> um, Android 12. And uh, of course, with that, we will need to, to use the uh, add the line, this line tools namespace. And um, we need to explicitly uh, specify the value for Android exported in the main activity. So we need to set the exported whether to true or false, as you like. And now most of our work will be focused on the theme .kt file and where those values are used in the rest of the application. So we won't change the color uh, file because we're not gonna use the colors, uh, but instead we will use the, we, most of our changes will be in the theme um, file. Uh, in the theme file, we need to remove and comment our all dark and light palette code and delete, for all of what we're going to use, we need to delete the material design too. And then we declare our own customized dark and light schemes. Mostly we will use gray and teal colors variations. So those colors uh, will be used if the Android version is less than Android 12, where dynamic colors are not supported. So I'm defining the colors here because if the application is running on a, an Android that is uh, on an Android version that is less than 12, uh, it will use those uh, scheme, those colors instead of the dynamic colors. Okay. So um, then in the art gallery theme composable function, we can see here, it takes a dark theme parameter of Boolean type to determine if the system is set to dark theme or not. And also dynamic color parameter, which is set to, to true because our application is already targeting uh, Android 12. And we are in the process of supporting dynamic colors. The third is the, the content. The last parameter is the content where we define our app content in the main activity file. Then we have a color scheme variable to decide which color scheme to use. This is the variable to decide which color scheme to use. Here we defined a when statement to set the color scheme value. The first case is um, we support dynamic colors and the app is targeting Android SDK S or later. So uh, if that is uh, met in this case, we will use the dynamic we will use those dark colors scheme and the light colors because we're not targeting Android 12. And yeah, if, if it's uh, true, we will use those colors that we defined previously. If it's not, we will use the dynamic. Um, uh, if this, is, this case is not like we are targeting more than Android, uh, the Android 12 or um, or more, we will use the, uh, the, uh, the color scheme, whether it's the, the dark color scheme or the light color scheme. Uh, yes, so here we are defining the current view to use, uh, to use it to set the status color as the primary color color and the status bar icon to be uh, dark on the light colors and to be light on the dark colors. We pass the above values to the inner material theme composable, which is, this is the public uh, API that we're using for the color scheme, the typography and the content. And it doesn't support, uh, there is no um, shape 
uh, parameter here. So we're not going to pass that. So yeah, uh, we're going to pass our color scheme here for the color scheme. And then if you do that and pass the typography the same as we had the typography before, it will give you an error because we did not migrate the typography yet. So let's do that. Uh, for the art gallery application, we are using body large and title large with those values. The font weight um, as normal, and then we're using 16 SP. And for the title large, it's the default and normal weight. And then the font size is 24 SP. So now we are done with setting up the themes. What is left is like, this is basically it. You, we just updated the colors, the typography. And now what, what we're going to do is we need to actually modify the old imports that are using the material design too to use the material design three library. So let's go and do that. <clears throat> As you can see here, we are referencing, we need to reference the color scheme, not the colors. And we need to modify that. We need to remove uh, the old imports that uses material design two. For the surface background, and we will use inverse on service. And then let's go inside the header composable and do the same by removing the all imports. Then you will be presented with this option. You need to, to add the material three option when, when, you, when importing this library. And yes, uh, let's modify the header colors and the type scales for the star icon. It will be painted in the secondary color uh, we defined. The text under will use a, this text, which is the art gallery. We will use a large title and the color will be the value of on background color. And the coat will use a large body. And also the color will be the value of the on, on background color. The set by, which is this one, like uh, we need to define that to use a small title or maybe a small caption, but here we're using a small title. It's fine, you can, like, uh, I think it's a small title here. Yeah, we don't have a caption. So yeah, it, whether we can use whether a small title or a small label. So anyways, let's get back to that. Yes, we're using a small title here. And also again, the color will be the value of on background color. We finished the header composable. Let's move on to the art, gallery, the art card uh, composable. We are displaying each painting on a card. This card background is tempted with the secondary container color, the secondary container that we're getting from the dynamic colors. And inside the card, we have an image which does not need to be changed. And the painting title, uh, we need to modify that and the artist uh, text. For the painting title, we were using the value of on background color. And for the artist, we are using a large body and the secondary color. Then we move to the expand icon with a color filter on background color. We want it to be the same as the text uh, above. So that's why we used uh, a fill, like a color filter Uh, to be on background, yes. The tent filter uh, to be on background. Uh, 
All right. Uh, after that, let's see how our application looks after that. Um, after supporting Material U, after all those modifications, after migrating from Material Design 2 to Material Design 3. You can see here, this is the art gallery application with different colorful wallpaper. So this was with a pink uh, wallpaper. This was with a, a teal wallpaper, and this is with a yellow one. <coughs> And this is how it looks when disabling the dark theme. This is the same application in Android R, which is less than um, Android 12, as you can see here. You can see the colors are, um, like you can't see the, these dynamic colors, but you can see that all of those colors are the same colors we defined before in the color scheme. All right, um, you can check the full code on my GitHub or start if you want to refer to it later. As I said, in the main uh, branch, you have all the code for after migrating to Material U. Um, yeah, for, for those videos from Android Dev Summit, uh, I want you to learn more. So you can um, uh, like see the learning resources here. This application uh, implementation applies only to applications that use Jetpack and Bose. If your app uh, uses classic views, you can try this code lab uh, for migrating to Material U for XML files for like the layout files, which, which would be the case, uh, of course, I guess more, most applications most production applications are now using the classic views, so you can actually uh, benefit from this code lab. You can check it out. And then also check those videos from Android Dev Summit. They talk about Material U and Jetpack Compose. And finally, more resources to learn more about Jetpack Compose. And now I want to take your questions and answer them. All right, please send me your questions. Uh, okay, it's time to answer some questions. Um, thank you so much, Miriam. It was really nice talk. I really enjoyed every bit of this. And it was really like, I feel more, you know, knowledgeable about um, the UI uh, stuff because I lack a bit there, um, haven't really, you know, into it but i think now i have like a really um like a basic understanding of how the things work um and you know there was really cool features of uh material three um so i think i'm gonna you know test them out uh really soon oh thank you thank you, so thank you. i like if you have any trouble i hope that this um like this could be a guide to all the migration to for a pure jetpack compose application yeah um you know that was really nice and all the resources which you provided they are extremely helpful i've taken a note of them and i think our attendees would have also done the same um as so for now i think um you know your um whole talk was like super clear <laughs> i think uh, we don't have any questions so far um we can wait for a couple of minutes if anybody's like typing them out or something. Um, but you know, in like whole, um, your talk was like super clean and super, um, yeah, it's you know, easy, clear. Actually. Like it's yeah. not about, I actually, um, migrating to Material U is really easy as you saw. It's not that complicated. You just, you know, migrate to the new uh, color uh, scheme that we, uh, that, uh, we shared previously and then you can also migrate the typography and for the shapes <coughs> as i said there uh, there is no parameter for the shape but you can always refer to the shapes 
as they are like as a value, as a constant value, or, or or you can add it as an object, and you can refer to it. That's um, yeah, that would that would be helpful. Like if, if it, even if it's not included in, or passed into the material team uh, API. Yeah, yeah, that that's super cool. Actually, uh, recently I've been doing some of the UI stuff and you know digging some things there. Um, I think that you know materials will like provide a lot of uh, you know, more options to like suit our UI and stuff. So that is really nice. And you would really, you know, explain them so superbly, <laughs> I would say. Um, thank so you. thank you so much for, um, you know, giving the talk. I really enjoyed it. Um, Not a problem at all. Um, yeah, I didn't actually focus so much on Jetpack Compose today. Uh, like I didn't explain the car, the, like the the um, the composable functions that uh, we're using, uh, but yeah, um, because I wanted to focus mainly on the themes, the material theme, and also the material U uh, migration. Yeah. But I would yeah. be more than happy to provide a session if you want, like if. Uh, if you want, I can provide a session where we can discuss the code that I wrote for the art gallery application. That would be exciting for me, actually. I don't know if you're interested or not. Just let me know and you can make it happen. Yeah, I think that's great news. What do you say, Sarah? Um, I think it will be like, um, I would definitely love to attend that talk. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, we can we can do that. No problem. I can uh, provide a <laughs> session where we can talk about why we used that composable function and not another one. Uh, yeah, yeah, we can we can we can have a session. Absolutely. Awesome. So yeah, so I think um, yeah, I think we can uh, like stop the session. What do you say, Sarah?